Welcome back, everyone, to the 2022 Junior Gold Championships here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. My name is Mike Flanagan, joined by the Hall of Famer, Carolyn Doran Ballard. And today we have the U-20 Boys and Girls Show, Carolyn. Yep, it's going to be very exciting. We have seen some repeat champions here. At, you know, we have JL that will be on the show. She won the U-18 last year. We have Laura Kurt, who is always in the hunt. And Anna, of course, I spoke to her earlier today and she said she's feeling very confident which is nice because i think bowling on so many patterns over so many days it can get a little trying but everybody looks pretty good out there today yeah we think jl has the most experience here today because she did win last year in the u18 mm -hmm. um but you know we've got a couple of great players as you mentioned we've got anna we've got laura as well laura the number one seed here today and uh, looking forward to uh, bringing another great show here. It's such great talent here at Junior Gold. I, you know, it's the same thing that we've been talking about uh, over the last few days. They're so much more prepared at this age than, let's say, five to seven years ago when you you saw Junior Gold bowlers. Right? It was a slow, slow process of of getting to that next level. At this point, when you get to U20, you're seasoned. That's, I, I want to really use that word as you are seasoned because A, you have a experience from all the junior events all over the country. You have many Team USA members. So now you have world experience. So you've been on live stream. Sometimes you've been on TV. So again, the U20 division at this point, I call them seasoned. They're not just beginners. They're, the nerves will be there, but I think they'll get over the nerves a lot quicker than they would have 10 years ago. Absolutely. Got our announcements happening here in the bowling center. Rob Gottschall making those announcements. And we've got a packed house here today as well. We have a lot of people here watching. We've got some stars in the crowd as well. Some big names watching this one here today. Melissa McDaniel. Melissa McDaniel here. clapping, sorry. We did that yesterday. Yeah, we did. Chrissy Ken here. I believe Kelly Kulix here as well. Board members, USPC board members, as well as... Um, I was just going to say, Junior Team USA head coach, Kelly Kulik. We'd also like to thank Jason Butler and his staff here at Fair Lanes. For their yeah, talking about Fair Lanes. Support. I've been here all week streaming here on Bull TV. Great hosts. They've given us anything that we've needed. And, and uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a good show here tonight. Lanes 9 and 10, our championship pair. Championship we saw it yesterday in the USA Bowling events. Division. Pretty good pair. It was a very good pair, and I think we saw a lot of uh, similarities between the USA Bowling Program, the U12, and the U15 division. We saw that that left lane seemed to be a little bit more forgiving at one point, right? A little bit tighter. You could play your angles a little straighter. The right lane seemed to hook a little bit early, a little bit earlier, and gave everybody a little trouble. But now, of course, this is a different pattern. So we'll have to see whether those lanes break down the same way. As Rob Gottschall just said, Laura Kurt will have to be defeated twice here today. As it is a true double elimination bracket to get here to the finals. Thank all the parents, families, and spectators for their support of the 2022 Junior Gold Championship. One additional reminder, ladies and gentlemen, we kindly ask that you silence your cell phones during today's tournament competition. We're going to welcome in our Bowl TV community watching here this morning. We see you all participating in our chat. Glad you're with us here today, of course, here on Bowl TV. Bowl TV, the home of the PWBA Tour, as well as the PBA 50 Tour this year, and also Junior Gold, of course, the event pass. And we also have a lot of collegiate competition right here on Bowl TV. So on Bowl TV, bowling lives here, Carolyn. Absolutely, bowling lives here. I was sure you were going to ask me. There's nowhere else I'd rather be but at. Yeah, Junior Gold. <laughs> What's better than Junior Gold? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> that's our uh, that's our new theme slogan yeah, here. It's early in the morning too. I think I'm getting a little silly. It really is. All right, so opening match here, we've got J.L. Hammond, the number three seed, taking on Anna Callen. All of the young ladies here today that we have on today's show, they're all 19 years old. Mike, do you remember being 19? I actually do. I you miss do? it. I miss it. Oh, do you? I miss the music. Oh. And the movies. It's all come back. That's right. It really has. 
Do you, do you remember 19, Carolyn? I do remember 19. I remember a couple of years. So JL's going to get things started here on the left lane. Deep breath. Nineteen years old from Jarrell, Texas, goes to Mount Mercy University in Cedar Rapids. In today's modern game, we talk about the oil patterns, and this is the eighth pattern that these young ladies have seen. Four patterns across 16 games of qualifying, two patterns in the advancers round, a pattern for match play, and we call it an eighth pattern here on this show, but it could be one of the patterns they've already bowled on because they do not disclose the patterns here at Junior Gold. So we're assuming an eighth pattern, but it could be a pattern they've already bowled on. We just don't know. Right. Now, during practice, I was watching the girls bowl. JL playing a little bit deeper than both of the other girls. Um, as you can see, she missed the head pin, made the spare. So we'll see what adjustment she makes. Also, it could be the first shot. I'm sure there's a little bit of nerves. Uh, but again, after the first two shots, I think they'll all just settle right in. So here's Anna Cowan. She's from La Crosse, Wisconsin. She's a sophomore redshirt at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Got a nice line of the pocket, doesn't she? Like I said, Anna and um, Laura were playing a little bit further right, as you can see, more towards that seven, eight board, going a little bit straighter. JL a little bit deeper. JL likes to play a little bit left to her opponents, kind of develop the shot for herself. But if both, um, if Anna starts to obviously strike, JL is not afraid to move immediately to where she needs to be. Had a chance to talk to all the players here this morning. They were warming up on this pattern, seeing it for the first time here in this bowling center. Pretty relaxed, everybody, for this show today. Mm, pocket 7-10. Left lane. A little bit tighter. Remember, remember what we saw yesterday? Ball just not quite finishing on this left lane, no matter what pattern you put down. It may be a characteristic of the lane, but that was a great shot. I think she's in the right area because I do like the ball motion. She may just have to make a slight adjustment. Or yesterday, like we saw, maybe just get around it just a little bit. But again, love the fundamentals. I mean, how solid are all of these youth bowlers at the line? Absolutely. Unbelievable. Yeah. All got great coaching coming up through the youth ranks and, of course, into college and a lot of college players on today's show. Gets the one. I'd be happy with my first two opening shots if, if I was Anna. But JL now looking to capitalize and get comfortable here on lanes 9 and 10 here at Fair Lanes. JL has had a lot of success at Junior Gold, made match play in 2017, 2018, 2021, and of course, won last year in the U18 division. Much deeper line than, mm -hmm. than Anna. Ball just not coming around the corner. She's using a little less surface, using an infinite physics. Trying to play that 11, 12, laying it down around 16. Not giving it much angle, though. Still, she told me earlier, too, that she was going to keep her angles somewhat in front of her, try to make good shots, and pick up the spare. Experiencing a lot of push in the middle of the lane, it looks like here. You see the ball just go right past the two pin, just gets the eight. Now, this should give her some feedback because I'm sure she moved a little bit to the right, obviously with her feet, right? Going to shoot at the two eight, and that ball just never got there. So her first two shots have not hit the head pin. 
the spare shot barely got to the spare so to me that should give you some feedback into I have not seen my ball hook yet and what is the key in bowling you need to see your ball hook before you can start to make your moves yeah you need that entry angle into the pocket so we'll see what the adjustment is here junior gold is the true test for these competitors when it comes to the oil patterns very demanding throughout the entire event all right, trip four pin, and remember, Carolyn, too, we haven't mentioned it yet on this broadcast, the players were allowed to check in five bowling balls at the beginning of the week, and that's it, five balls and no drilling other equipment, just five. Looks like JL moved even deeper on this left lane to keep her ball closer to the head pin. She's not really getting around it. JL likes to be a little bit more underneath it, let that ball roll off her palm, give it that smooth motion, very controllable. Got that one just a little left, has some hold. Look at this, hits about eight, nine, going a little more direct. It hit really Smash. hard. absolutely. She's a huge Wisconsin Badgers fan as well. Her favorite player, guess what, J.J. Watt. Also likes the entire Watt family. It looked like J.J. Watt going through the pins right <laughs> there. Ay, ay, ay. She was the youngest female bowler in lacrosse also to shoot a 300 game. Wanted to make sure we got that mentioned on there. She's very proud of that accolade. No 710 on the left lane there for Anna. She's got to feel good about that one. Let's see here little bit more direct right here ball finishing a lot harder than it did that first shot when she left the 710 again though we're seeing some similarities with that left lane being just a little bit tighter when you're now from the right JL tripped the four pin so it's going to be interesting to see how they play from the right and how they play from in yeah, and every time I've watched JL throughout this event when you just think she's down and out she comes back three, four bagger, five bagger. She can string strikes. It's almost like she bowls better when her back's against the wall. Yeah, definitely a never give up attitude. Better shot on that right lane. Much better shot. Coming in still just a little light. Moved just a little deeper. As you can see, she's hitting between those tracers. About the 12, 13 board down lane. Leaves the light seven pin where Anna is hitting about eight, nine at the tracer. Here's our word, we're back. Yeah, I love working with you, Carolyn. I love the tracer. I always know the tracer is here when you're in the house. It's so easy to talk about ball motion when you have the tracers. Eleven pin lead right now for Anna. Both players with an open frame in the second frame. Taking their time. Going through the pre-shot routine. Definitely missed left of target. I, right now, after the first four frames, I'm not really liking the middle part of the lane. I'm liking Anna's reaction just a little bit better. Jaya loves to play out. Um, maybe she's just not seeing it right now. But again, Anna's on a double. We'll see what she does in the next two frames and whether JL decides maybe to make that move. Yeah, Anna can take real control of this match if she can a couple of strikes here I agree with you I do like the look from out a lot better right now with what this pattern's giving them 
there must be a reason why JL chose to play more towards the middle part of the lane. Right, because Laura and Anna were both playing some of the right during practice shots as well. Well, with shots like that, you know, she's got a great support system. Kimi very straight in front of her, going a little right to left, right there, hitting 8-9 down lane. Perfect. She wanted me to give a shout out here to Coach Julia and Coach Wimper for uh, helping her along, of course. Uh, she's also good friends with Jeff Riggles from the11frame.com. Her parents, Jill and Chaz. Her brother and sister have supported her. The rest of her family, of course. Sean Walkner as well, who's just retiring. I saw him here in the building retiring from coaching. I said, it must be nice being able to retire so early, Sean. Of course, her friends. And she also would like to thank, thank the staff here at Fairlane. She's been bowling here all week. She said the staff has been absolutely fantastic. Pitch that one out on the lane just a little bit, but still has a great look to the pocket. Again, especially in this left lane, Got that one out onto the lane, as you could see, but still around that 8-9 area, wraps around the 10. She has not missed the pocket yet. Two forty-seven, the max score for both players if they were to strike out. Nice spare. See the scoreboard, 107 in the fifth for Anna. JL can throw a double here. She would have 97 in the fifth. And, of course, that spare there in the sixth makes things all even if both players were to strike out. Now we call that, though, a 20-pin lead for Anna. That's how we call that on television. In my opinion, that's her best shot of the match so far. Ball still not overhooking at all, just moving deeper, keeping it, crossing 15. Down lane. Really so shows. she's continuing to choose to move deeper and yeah. closer to the pocket, yeah. which is something she told me on the practice fair is that I'm just going to keep the ball closer to the pocket. So maybe she's just not seeing it from out. Yeah, it really goes to show the difference in, in strategies, how, mm -hmm. how players can attack the lanes and both have success. It's one of the great things about our game. No two people throw it the same, and here at Junior Gold especially, a lot of times there are multiple paths to the pocket. We're seeing that here. Not real comfortable on that left lane. Just keeps throwing it left to target at least the last two shots. Right. I don't think there's a lot of forgiveness where she's choosing to play the lanes. Um, again, her ball has not gone high. What I mean is hooked high. And I, you need to find the hook on the lane first and then kind of move off of that to see where you have hook and where you have hold. And right now, I don't think she has either. It's that fine line, and your opponent hasn't missed the pocket. So there's, that's where you, you say, do I stick to my game plan or do I make the move, which could be, could be drastic, right? Because you're going from playing 18, 19 to, you know, 8. Right. But JL has enough confidence in her game. She's good enough to know what she needs to do. Not only that, she's a student of the game. She's worked in a pro shop. She's um, always asking questions, always researching. And, of course, she bowls for Andy Dirks, who's one of the best coaches, obviously an assistant coach to Team USA. So 
Yeah, JL refusing to sit down in the chair, just back there hanging out with friends and family and coaches and talking between every single shot. Very comfortable here on our championship pair. Anna's looking really good. I'll tell you what, if I'm Laura, I'm watching this match. She lofted out on the lane just a little bit. You could see her hands way underneath it. Just letting that ball roll up to the pocket. Using a strong ball, Proton Physics. Very mid laning, not going to be overly aggressive on the back. Going to give you that strong, smooth motion. Right now, I like the look of it. I do too, yeah. If I'm Laura, I'd, I might be a little scared. Although Laura can go right up. I don't think too. anybody's scared. <laughs> I don't think any of these <laughs> ladies are scared. <laughs> I think they're all going like this. Bring it on. Bring it on. They were pretty tough on the high end of the building. Anna didn't bowl her best in the, in the match to see who was going to be the number one seed. She lost to Laura, seeking a little revenge here today if she can get past JL. That looked left off her hand. I wasn't sure if it was going to hold pocket or not. Grab that one just a little bit at the end. You can see her hand gets around it. And that's, and I, I want to talk a little bit about this because this isn't a bad thing. But on the right lane, it looked like she was a little more up the back of it, smoother motion. So that one, if she feels in her head, kind of like I do when I bowl, if you miss hit it just a little bit, you tend to overcompensate on your next shot. So just got around that one a little bit. Again, I think she still has a great shot to the pocket. Leaves a 3 six, 10. She's going to use a strike shot, or strike ball, I should say, to shoot the spare. Well, a big mistake there. Chopping the three right off the three six ten. Interesting, she elected not to switch to a plastic or urethane ball to go straight at it. So now JL has an opportunity here to step up in the eighth. Take the lead. Oh, solid eight pin, Carolyn. That is tough. Good shot on this right lane. Moving even deeper, crossing 20 out to about 16. I should say 12, 13. Sorry about that. But great shot. I agree with you. She Still puts she her right back in this match. Yeah, absolutely. She's going to have a two pin lead with a spare here. And the line that she is playing she has to be perfect yes and that was perfect and does not get the strike she's definitely been closer on the right lane than on the left lane so this will be a key shot right here to set herself up for the 10 because she the right lane has been more forgiving except for that first shot on the right lane when she right i believe uh she left two eight correct mm-hmm and just took the just took the eight off mm -hmm. of the two eight, so for the last couple of frames here on this left lane, she has been left of target. So she's gonna have to trust this one, I think. Mm -hmm. This is really the shot of the match here because if JL can get a strike here, she cannot be shut out by Anna. <laughs> left again. If she were to advance, she's going to have to figure something out on this left lane. That one, second tracer, did not get right of 17. Very unlike JL. Very JL much. is a great spare shooter. A great spare shooter. She's left of target on her strike ball and her spare ball 
on lane nine. Something is up over on that lane for her. I'm not sure what it is, but with that open frame now, the max score is 193 for JL. Anna can still bowl 213, but going at a 193 pace. So if Anna were to fill, go strike, spare, strike, or spare, strike, spare, she would finish with 193, and JL could go up and strike out in time. I was going to say we have the potential of a tie. We but do. I like how you explained that. Second a hook. Wow, it's wow. a I don't think she thought that was going to hook. She got that one a little right. Look at a little more towards the five board. But look at that. Yeah, you can gain a lot of information off of that one there. It looks like the yeah. players have a little more room to the right than they thought. Exactly. On that right lane. The left lane is more of that keep it in front of you. Create that little oh. bit of hold. Great recovery shot after her 3-6-10. But again... This is a key shot right here. A strike here. Locks out the match. Correct? Yep. I'm a terrible math person. You yeah. gotta get you strike gotta strike here will do it. And if she does not strike, JL can tie or win. Well, there's an opening there, and JL is going to have an opportunity to bowl on her better lane. Missed way left of target, as you can see. Hit 10-11 down lane. She's been staying around that 8-9 board area. Pays full penalty for it. She's got 179 right now. With getting one would put her at 180, which would mean... JL would need to fill 18 in the 10th frame to win by one pin. So the final score for Anna Callen, 179. So JL here has been given a gift, a real opportunity here and JL is bowling on her better lane of the two. JL must fill 17 pins here to get to 180. That can be a spare and seven. It can be a strike and seven on two balls. A lot of different ways you can draw this one up. But JL here is just going to want to hit the pocket and hopefully not leave that eight pin again. Ooh, almost a 7-10, coming in rather light, leaving just the 10 pin. I'm impressed with her shot making here on the right lane, though, mm -hmm. playing this really difficult line, very precise line to the pocket. Okay, so I, I have to tell you, when she makes the spare, I think she should try further right, but she's going to need count. She is going to need count. So... That's a tough one. And we just saw her flag a spare in the ninth. She missed it to the left. That can be in your head a little bit. And, and she missed this one too. Back Un to back very, open frames. Yeah, but very, very unlike JL. Very unlike her. She's a great bowler and a great spare shooter. This, this match went either way. Anna Collin advances in a You can see a finish. long hug here. Just left the target again. Something must have happened physically to her in this match that she threw that many shots left of target. But Anna is going to advance to take on Laura Kurt here in our championship match. And I like Anna's look to the pocket. Needs to draw the line here. Take some of that negative energy from the end of the match with the open frame and the 10th frame. And focus on the positives. And 
I like what we saw, especially on that right lane from Anna with that miss room to the right. And what I was going to say is I want to see Laura's first shot. She's further right. So it'll be very inter interesting to see the transition because I think both girls here will be playing the same part of the lane. So as the players practice, we're going to hear a word from our sponsors. Ever since the 1890s, when Brunswick first got into bowling, We've always had the passion and we've always tried to create and innovate new products. Bowler's interests are always changing, whether it's ball color, ball motion, lane conditions, and performance. At Brunswick, we always try to improve performance and discover new colors to meet those bowler's tastes. Whether it's outstanding performance, beautiful colors, or just how it feels in your hands, Brunswick is bowling. Get motivated to me is being the best that I can be, not just in bowling, but in life in general. What drives me is to be the greatest player that's ever played the game. That's ultimately the goal. You can't ever reach a goal if you don't set it. So um, if I set myself up to try to be the greatest player that there ever was, if I miss that goal by a little bit, I'm still gonna have a pretty good career. Get motivated. professional tournaments. We won a lot of tournaments worldwide. I mean, uh, we won more in the last 10 years worldwide than any company. We, we make good bowling balls and we, and good players use our bowling balls because they can win with them. Swimming in my head I've been dreaming on the air Welcome back, everybody. Mike here with you uh, back at Junior Gold, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Looking forward to bringing you this championship match here. And on tap, we haven't talked about it yet, the U-20 boys. we got a great one for you coming up here on Bowl TV immediately after the U-20 girls finals. Now, remember, Laura Kurt has to be defeated twice in this match. And we'll see if Anna can do so. I will tell you, just from personal opinion, I really like Anna's look to the pocket, especially on the right lane. And I think the key going into this one is going to be the left lane. Who can figure out the left lane? I certainly hope that Laura, I haven't watched her throw every practice ball going down the lane, but I would elect to put Anna on that left lane to finish for sure. But we will wait and see as we have our championship match here coming up. Watching a little bit of the practice there. You see Rob Gotchel, the voice of the airwaves here inside the bowling center here at Fairlanes. It's always fun having Rob on hand because he's an accomplished bowler himself. And it's great to kind of get some analysis from him. He helps me with the pre-show notes a little bit. There's a lot of folks around here that actually help with that quite a bit. Got a lot of notable names here in the building, a lot of bowling pedigree. Of course, the Bone family in the house, the Barnes family in the house. Coming up on tap, we've got our U-20 boys final. 
Justin Bone taking on Caleb Carey in the first match and our number one seed Ryan Barnes. The Ryan Barnes coming out party here today. But first, it's all U20 girls. I'm gonna give a shout out to those in the chat that are watching. I see you guys in there. Larry, Clay, Yvette, Tabitha. Great to have you here with us on Bull TV. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mara has finished her practice. She has chosen to have Anna start the match. As a reminder, the number one seed must be defeated twice here in the championship match, so Anna will have to defeat Laura two times. We're ready to get underway, ladies and gentlemen. How about a round of applause for our two finalists at the 2022 U20 Girls Junior Gold Championship. And here we go. So Laura choosing to finish on the left lane, which is the right call there. Is it really the right call? How do you know? Okay. <laughs> I think it's the right call. I do too. I do too. And again, you saw them in practice, both girls playing the same part of the lane. So it'll be interesting to see. The transition that takes place. Very aggressive shot out of the gate. Getting Good ball speed and everything. Now, interesting fact though, Laura has to be beaten twice yep. as leader, which I'm gonna go on record on Bowl TV. They hate hearing this from me, but that's the way the Queens and the Masters should be. Leaders should have to lose twice because it's a double elimination tournament. Okay, I said it, I'm done. Okay, but you, you do know you do know the reason why. Right? I don't Carolyn. care. I don't want to. I, I don't want to know the reason why. <laughs> We're on live stream here. We can do it your way. <laughs> Here's our first look at Laura Kirk, and that got down there so fast. Wow, a lot of ball speed there. Very aggressive. Again, you're going to see um, this match. I think we have Anna, who has a feel for the lanes. She knows what to do and what not to do. Laura is coming out with a lot of confidence. She's made some changes in her game. By the way, she has been down in Houston working with Donna Connors and Carol Norman for the last month. Just had a grip change, only f using it for about a couple of weeks. Oh, wow. So uh, one thing, though, that I really love that she's done is that her feet and her swing now match up so much better. She gets her ball into the swing a little bit quicker. It looks great. Going a little bit light. Gets this ball left to target just a little bit and it never reads it. I still like where she's at. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a little bit too uh, too much ball speed. Maybe a little amped up mm -hmm. there on that left Exactly. Line. Laura from Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina. She's a sophomore at SCAD, that's the Savannah College mm -hmm. of Art and Design. Coach Katie Thornton. Huge fan of the program, huge fan of Katie. Oh, she makes that. Oh, here we go, sorry, I'm clapping. <laughs> Great shot. If you're gonna leave it, you gotta make it, right? Yep, and you can build a lot of confidence from that, a lot of momentum. Using the striking against breast cancer bowling ball. Another shout out for Donna Connors and Carol Norman. Those chairs look comfortable, but I don't see anybody wanting to sit in them. No, all. they're not <laughs> using them. I wonder if we can return them. <laughs> I'd be sitting in those chairs down there, Carolyn, with Me my too. feet up, maybe on the ball return, reading the newspaper. Taking a breather. <laughs> yeah, checking my cell phone. Although I don't think that's allowed in competition here. I'll have to check the rule book. Ooh, Whoa, what a break. gets that ball into the lane just a little sooner. A little bit softer than that first shot on the left lane. Comes in just a little high, but by all means, let's strip out the 4, 7, and the 10. Yeah, I think a little move left and throwing it to a spot might be the answer when she comes back over on that lane. You know, that's one of those things after those two shots. So on the left lane, Anna was pretty aggressive, kept her ball speed up. On the right lane, she was a little bit softer. Whatever you feel as the bowler is your true asset. 
whether it's you know you're going to throw it harder because you're a little nervous, make the move based on that. Well, she's made two excellent shots on that left lane. Yep. When that was the lane that was giving her some trouble. There you go. Great shot, keeping it in front of her, more right to left. I like that idea. I think she's in the right part of the lane. Ball still looks great. Leaves herself the seven pin. We'll change balls to shoot the spare, I think. Or she's going to prove me wrong. Maybe not, right? She used a spare ball for the ten pin. She may use her strike shot. She may choose what Mike Flanagan does. She will use her strike ball <laughs> to shoot at the spare. <laughs> I dialed down my wrist brace. Okay, hooks at it. See that uh, split conversion there in a second by Laura. That's big early in the match. Using an idle cosmos, very mid laney with good, good entry angle. Hit them thin, watch them spin. I believe another famous commentator likes to right say. Right here, playing the same part of the lane to the tracer around that eight nine area, keeping it more a little bit right to left. Again, I think doing that has allowed both girls to have a little hole to the left. And again, if you get it to the right, especially in that right lane, remember, we saw Anna get the ball to the right just a little bit, and it bounced off the pattern nicely. Got a little score correction here. Junior Gold Championships here this year in, in Grand Rapids, great hosts. We've got several centers clustered here in the Grand Rapids area. Of course, we've got a couple of centers 45 minutes away in Muskegon, a couple of centers in Lansing. A little spread out here this year for Junior Gold, a little different, but great to be here in the great state of Michigan. Junior Gold gets started now with the U-20 event, and then next week starts all of the other events, all the younger athletes come in and participate. Wow, light again on the left lane. Going light on the left lane. We saw that yesterday. Remember the left lane got a little tricky where it was a little tighter on the back, especially with a lot of urethane going down the lane. She went light on the first shot. Again, leaves the 210. I think she needs to make a bigger move to the, and I'm, I'm telling this right now, bigger move to the right, you know, like a two and two or a two and one. Get that ball to at least pick up and get movement towards that pocket. Let's see if she can convert sliding the two over again here. A little bit easier this time, though. Almost. Yeah, really three options there, right? Either move right, either soften up with your speed, or you ball up and keep your speed That's firm. That's just what I was going to say. Or go, to, go to a bigger ball, right? I know just from past experience, uh, you know, I made a show or so. Yeah, you made a couple. And, and you know, you, you don't want to try to manipulate too much. You only have 10 frames. They go by rather quickly. To me, if, if you had a look playing your A game, to me the easiest thing is to ball up, right, or go to a bigger ball and just kind of do your thing, keep doing it, and allow the ball to do the work for you. Then you, you take the thinking out of it. Absolutely. And we've seen consistently on this right lane more of a defined hook spot. Mm -hmm. And Anna takes full advantage on this shot. 
Slaps the six into the ten. Out of both matches right now, she has been the most consistent in the yep. pocket. So, again, you, I would think watching that, you know what moves to make. Well, she's hit the pocket every single shot during this game. The one light seven pin shaker on lane nine, but this one here is a no doubter. Playing both lanes very similar. Great leverage to the line. Her ball gets into her backswing. She just lets it drop. For both, uh, for both girls, they have such smooth, smooth form that the only time they really get into trouble is if they hold on to it just a little bit, lag just a little bit in that backswing and get on the side of it just a little bit. Laura Kurt also, big accolade here, Alberta E. Crow star of tomorrow. That was something we all wanted to be when I was a youth player. That was the biggest, <laughs> biggest award you could get named, star of tomorrow, and she is a little star out there. Gets that ball closer to that 5-6. Look at how it peels off the Back of the pattern. Great shot on the right lane. Do you know Laura also likes to play volleyball? I do now. She must have some hops. She's not very tall. <laughs> she, she also likes to cook. And she watches a, a British cooking show on Netflix. She really likes it. Like sushi too. Oh. oh, definitely got that ball to the right. Did you finally? S there you go. Six seven gets it to the right. Great shot. Finds the friction. That's just a bad break. Well, the key to that bad break is even if Anna wins this game, and she's ahead right now, uh, they go into another game. But I'm sure every she would want to get it over in one game. Of course. Right? Of course. But there does come a point here where, you know, if, if Anna were to, let's say, strike through the eighth frame or so, uh, you know, Laura may want to use her last couple of frames as as an information couple of frames mm -hmm. to be able to maybe try some different balls, get some different looks. But that move she made on the left lane, I think she's pretty lined up now. And Anna knows the moment here. She knows how important these next couple frames are to take a stranglehold on this match. Remember, this is the lane you get a little right a little early. It could, could hook a little bit on you but you can also throw it to the defined hook spot. We'll see what she does here. Up the lane. Holds pocket. Gets it just a little bit left, but keeps her ball speed up, goes on just a little high. Hits them all. Now, to me, on that right lane, I'd move my feet just a little bit. I'd keep my eyes the same, keep my angle the same, in, in, in that I'm even though I'm moving my feet, my thought process would still be the same. You're moving the feet left? Yes. Or even just a two and one, which keeps your angles basically the same. Yep. And you know you have that little bump to the right. Yep.
She's been aggressive on this left lane in this game here. That has been the adjustment. Looking good. Another great shot. She has had the best look to the pocket, keeping the ball in play, working on just repeating. Great ball selection tonight. Pretty good carry on that left lane too, the lane that gave them trouble in the beginning. Laura playing the hold there a little bit. Gets the ball out onto the lane just a little. Pitches this one just a little bit. I like pitching the ball. She looks good doing it too. Helps the ball conserve some energy. Looks like she's getting a little more comfortable on this pair. Yeah, Made the move on the left lane. Laura can max it at 228. Respectable score here, but Anna lined up on both lanes now, can still bowl 279. If Laura can hit the 1-3, the amount of power she did the last shot, I think she's going to be happy with the adjustment on the left lane and have that going into the next game. But if not, she will have an opportunity to try some things on this lane, but I wouldn't. No, I think, I, I think both girls are lined up. I think their ball is matching exactly what they're trying to do and how they're trying to play the lanes. It's going to be who repeats, who carries, and has clean frames. Practice pair lanes have now come on for the U-20 boys match. They're getting an opportunity to bowl on this pattern for the first time. So if you hear some pinfall in the background, that's what that is. Ooh, trips the four. And got that one way left. Got around that one just a little bit more. Look at this. Hits the tracer at 10, but trips that four pin. That's telling you right now you are in the right part of lane, but making that move like we talked about, love the angle but it needs to be like a two and one, keeps the angle basically the same. You know you've got the bump to the right, but you wanna make sure that you continue to create that hold. Yep, I agree with you, two and one, two with the feet, one with the eyes. She's, she's just a, a little light seven pen away from having the front eight here, mm -hmm. Carol. No, she doesn't front eight. She's seventy nine. No, she would. Oh, I thought she, she would have. Oh, yeah, I'm have sorry. She didn't have front eight without that light seven. I was there. like, don't leave me now with the math mathematics. <laughs> Now right here, it looks like she got this ball right on this left lane. And as we have seen, if you don't quite catch it, getting it right on that left lane, it comes in half pocket. She leaves a 7-10. That's a second 7-10 she's left on the left lane. Yep. But won't matter in this match. Yeah, 228 again is the max score for Laura. One here gives her two, would put her at 215. Yeah, she could have to oh, mark. Oh, she'd have to mark. Yeah. See, I told you, don't leave me yet. A 
I learned many years ago, Carolyn, from a movie called Top Gun with a sequel that just came out. Oh, you yeah, never, Maverick. You never leave your wingman. Never, never leave your wingman. No. And by the way, Maverick, excellent. I would never put you in a corner <laughs> either, <Carolyn>. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to we're gonna start dancing here. Uh, I, I, <laughs> don't make me do the lift. You'd have to lift me up. <laughs> all right, here we go. Ninth frame. Laura needs a strike here. If she's gonna have any chance at all to close this out in one. Great shot. Very aggressive. She knows what she has to do. She is no stranger to pressure. Right here, they have kept that line. Both girls. So right here. Anybody who's watching, I mean, watch your opponents. She was paying attention when she was over on the practice pair, came in just a little light in the beginning of the match, made the adjustment, and put herself in position to possibly win this game. Yep, she can force Anna to have to mark and get four pins if she were to strike out. 228 the max for Laura Kurt. One other thing I wanted to point out here with Laura, everybody at home, and, and Carolyn, wa watch at the top of the swing. I love the top of her arm swing, what she does with the wrist. Well, we will have another game. Got that one right. It actually just overhooked. She almost loads up at the top. Yeah. She's very firm and then loads up but it's so clean on the downswing. Max score 205, Anna already has 215. Now, since this match is over, if I were Anna, to keep her rhythm and tempo, I would throw the same ball on the first shot or I would try a different ball just to see what it does. Sure. Yeah, they were only allowed to, to check in five. Mm -hmm. So she's got uh, four more to choose from. Yeah, it looks Except like for her spare ball. I guess you'd say three more. Yeah, looking at her, her ball list here, we actually mm -hmm. happen to have it. She's got a Rubicon UC2. She's got the Mixer spare ball, the Proton Physics that she's been using, an IQ Tour, mm -hmm. and a Rubicon UC3. And if she wants that... that Somewhat look, I would think the ball she'd go to next would be the IQ Tour. Um, I don't think it calls for urethane yet. Well, Laura has seen enough out there on the lanes to know what she needs to do a bowl a big game and take this thing home here. Anna is halfway done with her mission here, which is to defeat. Laura twice. She has one half of that complete. And it looks like she is going to try another ball. And she is going to the Prothane ball, which is a cross between urethane and resin, as I understand it. That is the Rubicon UC3. See that bowling ball delay hook? Much smoother look, doesn't pick up as early as the Proton. You can also be tricked here, you know, I think I would stick with the same ball she was using, but you go up and you throw two or three strikes with another ball, sometimes it can get in your head and, mm -hmm. and actually can be, you know, a deterrent, because then you're questioning, what should I do, you know? What, w what would you do here if, if she throws another strike with this with this ball here? Do you stick with the proton or do you do you switch balls? I stick to the proton, and I throw my first couple shots, make the move the way I want to. If I don't see the reaction, I know I have a ball to go to. Yeah, and if it's me, and if she strikes with this ball, I go back to the proton for the last shot, just to mm -hmm. just to have that in my mind yep. going into the next game. Because that right tell that tells you right there, a little bit too weak on the back, yep. right? But again. Stick with the proton. If you know that you don't like that proton after the first two or three frames, she could probably make an another move to the right with that ball yep. and be fine. Maybe a one and one mm -hmm. or just a one. Exactly. Because her angles on both, shot, both shots were very good. 
So there you go, everybody. There's there's your tip for you at home, everybody watching here today. Little little inside bowling here, a little inside baseball, as I like to say on our broadcast when we're live streaming. From one of the greats ever, Carolyn Doran Ballard, helping you get lined up to the strike pocket right here. Bowling 101, you must see your ball hook first before you make the move. Well, the crowd is getting even bigger as we have more folks showing up for what's on store here on tap coming up next, the U-20 boys division. But now here it is. This is our final match. We have gone to overtime. True double elimination bracket. And does Laura get to choose for the second game? Interesting, because she's starting on the left lane. She'll finish on the right lane now, because she finished on the left lane earlier. Correct? Yep. Okay. She likes she likes the uh, she likes the right lane better. I like her look on the right lane better too. Didn't get that ball to the right on the left lane. Kept her ball speed up. Kept the ball a little bit more in front of her, and that seems to be the ticket. So both girls at this point must win situation, right? Yep. And I already am proud of, of Anna Callen here for going back to the proton physics. I've seen so many times call in action over the years where a player can be tricked into switching balls on a shot in the 10th frame where they decided to switch balls, had a pretty good look. I'm like, oh, I'll just switch to that ball the next game. I think this is a smart play, just like you said. Certainly more aggressive bowling ball, but you want your ball going through the pins looking like that. Unfortunate to leave the nine. And again, it could. I, I like the way she threw it. These are just simple moves right now. I don't think there's anything drastic they have to do. They've, they've got a nice shot to the pocket. It's just the simple moves of the two and one, keep the ball in front of you, stay aggressive, and fill your frames. Talking with Anna, you know, she's going to be going to the University of Nebraska. She's been going there, but she's going to get to bowl this year. She said she's looking forward to it. Her favorite pro bowler, Julia Bond, no surprise there. She loves Julia, also helps coach her. And uh, her other favorite pro bowler, Shannon O'Keefe, a couple good ones there. Comes in just a little light on this left lane. Didn't quite get around that one the way she's been getting through it, but only leaves the two pin. She's very deliberate and taking her time. If you notice, she yeah, touches she her is. ball and then she kind of steps back again and refo refocuses on what she needs to do. Pre-shot routine is, is taught at every college these days. And you can see the, the tap of the of the shoe, the chamois, deep breath.
Laura stepping up here, have an opportunity to open up with a double. Get some confidence going here. Championship match. Just a little left. Yeah, definitely left the target but on I'm, that one. But, but right here, it's telling you something, right? We say, watch what happens because it almost held. So again, we've talked about that small move on the right lane. Again, I think Laura needs to make that move too because when they get it a little right, it's gonna come back. We saw that yesterday where when they got the ball to the right, it bounced on the right lane, not on the left, but on the right. Covers up the spare. One pin match through two frames. Carolyn, do you like to play video games at all? Um, I'm not a big video game fan. No, no. I mean, it's okay, but why? Well, Laura here does. You know what her favorite game is? Um, I'm I'm gonna say it's one of those where the I I I don't know. Shoot a lot. <laughs> <laughs> shoot a lot. Shoot or shoot a lot. Game. Run around or <laughs> the cars or who knows? No, she likes to play Guitar Hero. <gasps> Guitar Hero. Del Del's a Guitar Hero person. Oh, really? Oh, he's a yeah, he's a freaky air guitar person. You ever see him in the car? He's going like this with his hands and me. You know. Well, how about an Instagram live sometime in the next thirty days? Let okay. me know. Okay. Text me before you guys do that. Okay, okay? absolutely. Two eight on the left lane now for Laura. Definitely got this one left. Looks like she threw it pretty good. Yeah, just I didn't really see anything too wrong with it. Nope. I think that's more just maybe a little bit hard, a little bit, you know, ball speed. Again, this is the match. Yeah, title on the line here. There's no gimmies now. <laughs> I thought we might see just that nine, uh, that eight pin again. Yeah. Choosing to hook just out just a little hits bit. Just it enough. There you go. It's kind of crazy here. Both players are pretty lined up there. Mm -hmm. That last game, we've only got one strike through two and a half frames. But clean so far. That's the important thing. Bring your spare game here. See if she moves in just a little bit. Pitches that just a little bit. I like when they pitch it just a little bit. I think it conserves energy. It takes just that little bit of the mid lane out of play. Right here, great shot. The fundamentals are sound. They're strong at the bottom. I mean, again, we talked about it yesterday. You know, hats off to all the coaches and people who take the time to work with all of these young athletes. Um, this is this is the future, and you can see it's it's pretty it's pretty sound. Yeah, we've been talking about it on our Bowl TV streams over the course of the next you know week and a half, and 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 the prior half week that we've already been here in Grand Rapids area here for Junior Gold 2022. These are the future superstars. These are these are PBA and PWBA champions in the making. Yeah. Now that was 10 back. Two, no doubt on that one. Two very aggressive shots. She kept her ball speed up. Got around that just a little bit, not too flat. She, her on the shots where she was light, didn't quite get around it, kind of miss hit a little bit. Two very aggressive shots to put some pressure on Laura. On our bio sheets here, uh, we have favorite pro bowler listed. 
digging a little little deep here with uh, CDB. We got Shannon O'Keefe listed for Laura, Danielle McEwen, and Stephanie Johnson. She said it was hard to choose. One of the reasons why I'm mentioning this, Stephanie Johnson in our chat right now. Hello, Stephanie. Hope you're doing well this morning in Texas. Gets that a little right. Now, remember, we saw that, that little bit of right. That's why I think you have to make the move, the parallel move to the left, so that when you miss right, you're far enough left, and when you miss left, you have the hold. We'll see if this is a, a, a trend. So far through three shows that we've done, we had the USA Bowling shows, as Carolyn is, uh, is alluding to, whether this, this right lane continues to want to pick up a little bit sooner and the left lane tend to want to push the ball a little bit further down the lane before it does recover. Something to keep an eye on throughout all of our shows, as I'm sure everyone will be tuning in to all the Junior Gold shows here that we have. But so far, that's the trend, and a trend is your friend, and that information very important on helping you throughout these championship rounds. So anybody else out there watching that may make the TV show, keep that in mind about this pair of lanes. It's a 13 pin lead right now for Anna through four frames. Somebody's got a ringtone going off here in the bowling center. I believe it was Who Can It Be Now? It's it's a trend here during our show. Yeah, we had it though. We had quite a bit of cell phoneage going off. There was an announcement beforehand, so hopefully we'll have no more of that. Oh, the messenger. Gave that one a little more room out on the lane. Increased her ball speed just a little bit. Gets down the lane a little bit further, but great hit. Almost leaves the 7-10. Could have taken out the 10, but goes right in front of it. Giving herself the 10 pin. She'll pick up the striking against breast cancer spare ball. Check that out on Facebook if you want to learn more about those bowling balls. Goes to a great cause. Big tournament coming up here in a couple of weeks. And again, no one's sitting in that left chair. <laughs> no, no, nobody's sitting in the chair. There's, some, there's something about no. the left chair. <laughs> we need to 86 those. Those are write-offs. No. Those are write-offs no, no. at this point. <laughs> Anna is sitting in the right chair. There's something with the left chair. I think no one goes sit in. That's where we do the interview from. Yeah, before the U20 boys, I'm going to swap the two chairs and see if it's just something about the chair specifically. Okay, we're off the rails now. Typically, I'm the one that does that. You're a bad influence on me, Carolyn, a bad influence. Not the first to say that to, <laughs> to me. We have a lot of celebrities watching today. I just checked my phone. Boy, the pedigree of bowlers we have right now watching this today, they know the, the future that's coming. They're scouting it out ahead of time. Anna on the right lane. Commanding shot to make it a triple. I like when she lofts it. She catches it just a little bit more when she gets it out onto the lane, and look at that, high flush. Well, I know down on the high end we've got Chris Barnes, Parker Bone, Doug Kent, Del Ballard. That's some titles. That's yeah. some majors. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to talk about all of them the next match. Laura can still max out at two, excuse me, Anna can still strike out for 279. Pitching it out there, you can see her getting it out onto the lane. 
another great shot to apply some more pressure to Lara. Ball change here, going to a stronger ball, Gem. This is a big change here, but when you don't strike for four frames and your opponent's throwing a bunch of strikes at you, this is this is the type of adjustment that you have to make. And this ball will be a little closer to, to what Anna is actually using. It's going to roll up a little sooner, be a little bit smoother on the back. Gets that ball just a little right, not a good shot. <laughs> Leaving the five count washout right here. She just gets it way right, but you can see she fell off balance a little bit, just maybe a little quicker. Remember I mentioned her timing and now she's getting the ball into her swing so much quicker. Um, but again, a little amped up, changing balls, pressure situation, your opponent has four in a row, um, hasn't missed the pocket, so She's going to try to make this spare, regroup, which I know she can, and make a great shot on the left wing. Yeah, if she spares this, she can still bowl 230 on the nose. Certainly still in the match, but is going to have to find a way to put some strikes up on the board. Oh. oh. What a great shot at it. Wraps right around that six pin. Look at this. Does exactly what she needs to do. So now 219, the max for Laura. At this point right here, definitely a must strike situation to kind of get things going, give her a look on the lane. Much better shot. Yeah, chooses to go to that ball on the left lane as well. She, yep, she, and she's shaking her head. She knows. She just made a bad shot on the right lane. It happens. But right here, playing the same part of the lane that she was playing with the Idle Cosmos. Just changed to a stronger ball. It's going to be a little sooner. And give her the look into the pocket, similar to what Anna is doing. These players also made it through a very talented field here this year. Mabel Cummins, highly decorated player, was the number one seed, won her first match, lost the next two. Several other collegiate stars also in the field. Far too many to mention, but Mabel was the leader. I wanted to get that in there. Really difficult road to the show here. Loaded field. <laughs> Anna looks like she's on autopilot right there. She got that ball into the lane just a little sooner, but again, made sure she caught it. Great reaction. She's talking to herself now. Little self-talk. Everyone who's watching, especially our youth bowlers, self-talk. Never hurt anybody as long as it's positive. Got that one right, miss hit, miss hit it just a little bit. That ball is Comes out. up light. Two, three board, pretty close to the gutter there. A little bit further out than what we've seen. If she were to open here and not convert this split, which in my opinion is 50-50, it's going to put her in the 180s in the eighth frame. So if we pace that out, that puts her in the 220s. Laura right now can get to 219. 
So still alive. Mm-hmm. A lot of frames left. Two frames is a lot of frames. Wow. Goes right in front of it. Thought you had a chance at it. Looks yeah, good. Looked good. Right here comes in just a little light. That's tough to take the two and the eight out and not get the seven with it. 244 the max for Anna Laura. Again, 219. See if she can make a better shot on this right lane with, right. The, with the ball change. Must strike situation. Great shots. Looked good off her hand, but again, we talked about that spot on that right lane right that, here. That looks a, pretty good. This is a more aggressive ball mm -hmm. than, than, the, uh, than the Cosmo yep. she was using also, right? Picked up just a little too soon. Left the 6-10. Needs to probably make a bigger move on that right lane. It does seem to be where it reads when you get it to the right, that spot right by that first tracer tends to roll up a little bit sooner than it does on the left lane. And again, there's definitely hold on this pattern. So again, the small move to the left, just keep your ball speed up, should be right in the pocket. All right, as we take a look at the scoreboard here, Laura can bowl 199. Currently, Anna has 184. So she would need to bowl 200 is the magic number, the magic number currently for Anna, which would mean she would need 16 pins in the ninth and 10th frame to take home the U-20 Girls Championship. As you say all the time, must strike situations, this is it right here for Laura. To have any chance. Oh, great shot. She made two very good shots on this left lane. Very aggressive. Just a bad break. Now this is one of those situations where we've seen both players play around the same part of the lane, but Laura has a little higher rev rate. Maybe she was a little too on top of the pattern throughout this show here today. Looking back, if you were second guessing or Monday morning quarterback and things, Maybe throwing it to the defined hook spot would have been a better plan of attack. But I think she's bowled great today. The pins just didn't cooperate. Yeah, and I, I do think she would look back on this too. The Cosmos was forcing her to be too perfect. Uh, gave her a, a good look, but just too perfect. I think with the gem being a little bit sooner and closer to what Anna's using would give her that uh, earlier roll and smoother reaction, more controllable. Yeah. Well, here we go. Victory lap for Anna Cowan. It has already been decided and you may see some emotion now start to come out. When you shoe up for this event, there were 79 total participants in the U20 girls. You know, you, you never know if you can win. You look at that loaded stack field and say, can I really do this? Well, guess what? She did it and this is her moment. There you go. She was definitely the one to watch on this TV pair, though. She had the best look to the pocket. Um, even going back to when JL watches this, she may say the same thing to herself. Gosh, you know, now that I look, you know, and you learn from that. It's, an, it's another learning experience. Again, JL, great champion, great bowler. Uh, Mount Mercy, uh, collegiate bowler with Andy Dirks. All of these young ladies will look back and say, oh, I should have, or I should have tried this, or next time I'm going to do that. And again, you don't like losing, but it's a learning experience, and they all did fantastic to get to this TV show. Coach Julia and Coach, Coach Kempel, I'm sure, are extremely proud of Anna here today, as well as her parents, Jill and Chaz, brother and sister, of course. All of her friends that have supported her, this is, a, this is a big moment. It's time to go out and celebrate this one. You see the emotion setting in, trying to keep it back. That's so tough. 
But this is her moment. She has shined here in 2022 here in Grand Rapids. And still throwing strikes, going out with a bang. And you can see such camaraderie. I know Laura's disappointed, but still. Happy for your opponent. It's tough to do. I was never a hand hitter. So yeah. that would be, you know, be something I have to get used to. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's it's a, it's a newer thing. You know, yep. we were, we were mm -hmm. talking before the show about social media mm -hmm. and how things have changed so much and promotion of the game yes. and how close knit everybody is. And mm -hmm. these two are great friends. And yep, what a moment here for Anna. And she stepped up to the plate. I mean, she never let down from game one. Played the lanes the right way, chose the right ball, and. Clean frame. She made all her spares. Great strategy. Great play of the lanes. Great ball choice. Great ball choice when she checked in the balls on the ball card, too, with only five. She had a nice lineup of balls. You see the high, high five there to Sean Walkner. Sean Walkner recently on the cover of Bowler's Journal magazine. I used to bowl against that guy. I should have taken a different path. I want to be on the cover of Bowler's Journal one day. <laughs> I know somebody who could talk to somebody. <laughs> Give me that number. I'm, I'm texting that one. Laura finishing out. What a, what a great week for Laura. I love her game. I love what you said, uh, that, you know, that she's been working with, with, uh, with the folks down there, uh, Carol Norman and Donna Connors. She's got a bright future, a great game. Yes, and she'll be back. She'll be back on this show. Uh, you're going to see great things from her as well as all of these young ladies. Yeah, and Bull TV subscribers out there, you know, the PWBA lives right here on Bull TV. This is one to watch for, both of these ladies. In the future. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Cutters on a fantastic week of the Folks, coming up next year on Bull TV, Bull TV will be your U20 boys final. But uh, before we do that, we've got some pictures to be taken here. See Melissa McDaniel, Chrissy Kent, Dave Schroeder, Gary Brown down there on the ground taking care of business. Carolyn is going to speak to our champion.
All right, looks like Carolyn is standing by with Anna. So I am here with the U20 girls a division winner, Anna Callen. Anna, you had the best look from game one. So tell me a little bit about your game plan before you got to the TV pair. My gut feeling told me that it was actually gonna be an outside shot, just because we bowled so much inside the whole week, um, what it felt like to me. So my gut told me to start outside. And then funny thing is I hadn't touched the Proton at all this week. It was my UC2, UC3, and then the IQ Tour, and so then I went outside and the IQ tour didn't look good, so I'm like, oh, I'll jump in with it, and went straight. So then I was like, I don't think inside's the move. And then I hopped back outside, I'm like, what about the Proton? And I'm thankful Sean Walkner was here, he coached my brother, and I was like, so you're here to coach me, right? Because he'd left his house at 3.30 in the morning to come surprise me, and so he helped me, he guided me, he's like, I think outside's the move, because they're gonna try and play in, so let's sit out there, and it, it played in my favor, so I'm thankful. You made some great shots there. I loved when you were getting it out on the lane a little bit. Now, on your fill shot, though, that first match, you did try, I'm sorry, when you bowled Laura, you tried a couple of uh, shots with your UC3. What was your thought process there? We just wanted to see if it was there, just because um, it was it was fill. We had some fluff room, so we were like, why not see if something else is there with a different ball, better carry, but then... He asked me after I did it, and I'm like, I feel, still think the Proton's a move because it was striking, and it ended up being still the right move. So I'm, I'm very happy. Absolutely. It gave you a little bit of hook, a little bit of hold. You threw it fantastic. And finally, you're on your way to University of Nebraska with one of my favorites there, Julia Bond. Tell us what you're looking forward to most. Well, I was there for one year. I'm a redshirt freshman, so I'm looking forward to this season, being out in the lanes with my team because I traveled, but I didn't perform. But now this year, that's what I'm looking forward to most and just making better connections because me and Coach JB, we started together um, both our first years. So I'm just looking for that relationship to keep growing, my relationship with Coach Klumper to keep growing and the girls. Um, I'm excited for Jillian to join us and Catherine Bowman. So that'll be, it'll be a fun, it'll be a fun year. I'm very excited for it. Well, I think you're going to be absolutely awesome. And I look forward to seeing you on the Pro Tour one day. Congratulations again. Back to you, Mike. Thank you very much, Carolyn. So there you have it. It's a wrap on the U-20 girls. We've got the U-20 boys coming up next year on Bowl TV. And like Carolyn said, the University of Nebraska, the Cornhuskers are going to have themselves a nice run over the next few years in the college bowling world. But, you know, it's fierce competition over there. So make sure you follow the collegiate bowling season coming up. Uh, the next few years are going to be really bright, really competitive on at least the women's side. But... The men's side is great, too, but I'll tell you what, there's a lot of great coaches and a lot of great up-and-coming talent over there on the women's side. So good luck to Anna and everyone at the University of Nebraska. And shout-out to Coach Paul Klimpa and Julia Vaughn and the folks at Nebraska on a big win here today in Grand Rapids. My name is Mike Flanagan. Thank you for joining us for the U-20 girls. Coming up here in just a little bit on Bowl TV, we'll step away for a, few, for a little bit. We'll come back. With that final, of course, we've got Justin Bone taking on Caleb Carey in the first match. The winner will go on to take on our number one seed. His coming out party here at Junior Gold 2022, Ryan Barnes. It's going to be a good one, everybody. We'll see you in a little bit.
also like to thank Mike Naraki and his staff at Sherman Bowling Center for their hospitality and support this week in hosting the Under 20 Boys Junior World Championship. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet the players competing for the 2022 Junior World Championship in the Boys Under 20 Division. In our opening match, he's from Jackson, New Jersey, Justin Bone. <laughs> from Hobart, Indiana, Caleb Carey. <laughs> and our top seed from Denton, Texas, Ryan Barnes. <laughs> These are our three finalists in the boys under 20 division. On behalf of the Junior Gold Tournament team, we'd like to thank all the parents, families, and spectators for their support of the 2022 Junior Gold Championship. That's awesome. Only thing, just a reminder, we kindly ask that you silence your cell phone during today's tournament competition. Starting our first match. Bowling fans, how about a great send off for our opening match in the 2022 U20 Bowling Junior Gold Championship? Welcome back, everyone. Junior Gold 2022 here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's the U20 Boys Final. Mike Flanagan and Carolyn Doran Ballard, the Hall of Famer, USBC Hall of Famer, and PWBA Hall of Famer. Carolyn, again, congratulations on your recent induction to the PWBA Hall of Fame. Hey, thanks. You're welcome. Get things started out here with our number two qualifier, Caleb Carey from Hobart, Indiana. Comes in right on lane number nine, leaves the two, four, six, ten to get things started here. He is facing Justin Bone, the son of legendary lefty. Arguably one of the greatest lefties in the history of the PBA Tour, Parker Bone the third. <coughs> and on this show, of course, our top seed is Ryan Barnes, son of Chris Barnes. And Linda Barnes. Thank and you. And Justin is the son of Leslie Bone. Thank you. I got, you're very welcome. Very welcome. They are star makers, if you know what I mean. Yes, they are. Caleb's mom and dad as well. Um, but I wanted to say Caleb's first shot, he looked very comfortable over on the practice pair. I liked speaking with him. He felt very confident and comfortable. But again, we see those first few shots, maybe just a little amped up. Too much ball speed, ball just didn't read the lane. Here is Justin Bone. Oh, that's a sick messenger. Looking at Justin going two-handed. Now, the unique thing about Justin Bone, he can throw it both ways. He can throw it two-handed, and he can throw it traditional. Yeah, in September of 2020, he was confident enough to use the two-handed style in competition. Uses it almost exclusively now. But does switch to traditional bowling to throw it as spares. Caleb is 18, Justin 19. Justin, of course, from Jackson, New Jersey. And I want to go ahead and shout this out right away. The one thing he wanted me to get in here today was that he does have a YouTube channel. Justin Bone is the channel name. Make sure you head out, subscribe, like, comment, and follow Justin Bone on social media as well. So there you go, Justin. Invoice is in the mail, my friend. <laughs> I'm going to say it. I think every kid's got a YouTube channel. <laughs> Check them all. <laughs> 
interesting. Two different balls on this championship pair using the purple hammer on the left lane. And the heat on the right lane. Now, the interesting thing about that too is you can see, and I wanna watch Caleb's next shot, but Justin is basically playing the lanes just close to the way the girls played them. He's a little bit further right, using that eight, nine area as his break point. But again, do you think you're thin on that left lane because you could just keep it straight in front of you. Remember, it didn't break down as fast as that right lane. Yeah, could be, we'll wait and see. Caleb Carey is a sophomore and so is Justin. Great comeback shot. Playing a little bit more direct. Right here you're gonna see he crosses 12 out to about eight, nine. Comes in light pocket, gets the five, seven out of there. Looks like he's using the Brunswick Quantum Evo Pearl here to start things off. Ball that's just a little bit cleaner in the front part of the lane. Gives him that smooth reaction on the back. As you can see, all of the bowlers not using balls that hook, do the hockey stick, right, on the back end. Things that actually read the middle part of the lane, smoother reaction off the end of the pattern, um, which tells you something about how they've been reading the lanes all week long. Caleb is quite the character as well as he makes a great shot there in the third. Takes a couple deep breaths before he threw this shot. Much more direct, much better shot. Again, Tracer, I love it. 9-10. Keeps his ball speed, but on that one, kept the ball in front of him. Great reaction. He's got a great sense of humor, a great kid. He bowled in a Fred Flintstone-themed jersey to finish match play. Little, little tidbit about, about Caleb. More about Caleb as we switch things over to Justin Bone. Of course, his sister Sydney made a show last year here at Junior Gold, and his brother Brandon has, has won twice in two different divisions. This is Justin's first show. <laughs> Justin looks pretty locked and loaded here on the championship pair. Take a look at his style. Very comfortable. Look at how smooth he gets that into the swing. But again, do you notice the difference with Justin? With the two-handed, he does not bend the elbow. No, he It's a little not. bit straighter, almost like the Mike Miller of yeah. many years ago. But still creates the rotation like a, obviously, and the rev rate like a two-hander. Those of you playing PBA bingo, you can cross off the Mike Miller spot. <laughs> we tend to do that throughout the telecast, you and I. We, we are old souls. Yes. That one sounded like it hit a hole going down the lane. Got that one a little right too, using urethane, playing a little bit deeper on this lane. Ball just does not quite get there. Again, if they watched, even though they have higher rev rates, what what the, the girls did on this, on this TV pair, chased it a little bit more to the right. Once they got a little too deep, ball sailed on them, either to the right and there was no hold left. So an open frame for Justin Bone. Now notice we, the, the, the chair on the left isn't being used on this telecast, but, but we are having... Or, you should, or on the right if you're looking at it the yeah. other way. But yes, you are correct. <laughs> Caleb is finally using the chair that has not been used for two games, three games, right? Whatever it was. There is Parker Bone the third and Brandon Bone talking with Justin. Parker's not saying a word. And of course, Brandon's saying everything. Oh. And of course, there's Leslie right yep. next door. Caleb, great support having his family here. Key to all of these bowlers, everyone kept calm during 
the week. They felt like their bad games didn't, they didn't allow them to get it down, get them down. Caleb left the target right there, gives a little point to his support system here. Left the target, nice break. Definitely lifted up on that one a little more. He, he uses a lot more of his upper body than you'll see with Justin and Ryan. But that one just got around that one a little bit too much, but gets the break, taking the Brooklyn. I spent quite a bit of time talking to Caleb this morning as he was the player that I knew the least. Obviously, Ryan Barnes, Justin Bone, this is the least decorated player that we have here on today's show. And an interesting thing he told me about about his collegiate career is, is he bowled in college and didn't have a really great experience. As a matter of fact, it, it, was, it was so bad for him that he actually walked away from the second day of sectionals, quit bowling, wasn't sure if he was going to come back. His friends and support staff that are here tonight convinced him to get back out on the lanes. He's had the tournament of his life, and he's looking to maybe get back into college bowling. Oh, look at this. In the pocket, 4, 10. Look at, a little bit high, you think 4 pin. The 10 stands with a bad break for Caleb. Boys obviously playing just a little bit deeper, so time. I liked Caleb's shot. I would make a move off of that because his ball speed and everything else seems pretty good. He seems confident, so make the move because that just was a bad break. This is a big deal for all three finalists here tonight. Justin Bone looking to following his brother's footsteps here. Of course, Justin is older than Brandon. Would like to get a win here tonight. Have a little more bragging rights at Thanksgiving dinner. Ooh, collapses the bucket. Definitely got that ball in, playing a lot straighter. Look at this, straight angles. Getting it out to about eight, just barely clipping the head pin, gets the light hit. Got a big crowd here. We've been talking about the crowds have been great. We've got so many folks in here cheering on all of our players here today. Our setup's a little bit different. Our booth is off to the side. That's because we wanted a little more air time throughout the show. So thank you, Jason Thomas. He is right here producing. Got a great team here putting on the show here tonight. I want to thank everybody here at Fair Lanes as well for being great hosts. All of our shows will be right here on Lanes 9 and 10. I was also informed that Lanes 1 through 8 were added later. 9 and 10 used to be 1 and 2 in this bowling center, so maybe that's why we see a little bit of a difference between both lanes. Made the move to the right. Do you remember we saw that earlier on this left lane? Right here, watch. Gets that ball out to about 7-8 and peels right off the end of the pattern. That's the way I think we need to play that left lane. Caleb, I'm sure, was watching, playing a little bit deeper than Justin, needs to make the move. Caleb slowing things down here a bit, taking his time. Going through his process, he's talked a little bit about that. Great comeback shot after that 4-10 right here, playing a little bit deeper, like I said, getting it to about 9-10 down the lane, ring 10. Just barely behind the head pin on that one. Take a look at the scoreboard there. Justin Bone with a 12-pin lead through five frames. Not a problem, like it had eyes. <laughs> you only have to tape, uh, tap it, Caleb. You only got to tap it. Going back from s for some advice. Yeah, wanted to give a shout out to his mother, 
Linda, and of course his dad, JD. JD's been dealing with a few health issues, had a stroke five years ago. Things haven't been so easy for JD. JD watching this afternoon. Shout out to JD and all the support you've given Caleb over the years. And you know his sister, Marissa, is quite an accomplished bowler. Collegiate Bowler of the Year. Runs in the family. I was going to say, I, if you look at so many of these youth bowlers, um, they've either had, you know, a sister or a brother or have been around the college scene or their parents bowled or the, the pro shop guy used to be a regional player. I mean, they're exposed to so much knowledge and, and all the good things about bowling. Great shots by Kayla. Very, very impressed. Yeah, his last three shots have been really good. Nice adjustment on this left lane. Honestly, the only shot was his first shot. You know, a little amped up, didn't quite quite get it to the spot down lane. But since then, he has been rock solid, got the bad break with the 410, but has bounced back with a double. Justin I'm Bone, sorry, with a strike. Justin Bone can max out at 256. It's 234 for carry. And you know, with, with the shows that we've been doing the last few days, things have changed quite a bit. Like it's flopped back and forth, back and forth. So you're never out of it. It's a never give up, never give up game. A lot of parody in the fields, loaded fields. Uh-oh. He looks a little confused by that one on the right lane. I thought that one was a little slow, and let's watch, see how he gets it to the right. Do you remember this right lane? Yep. Get it to the right, it over bounces, correct? Yep. And don't forget, you have higher rev rates with the two-handed bowlers. Again, uh, that's been there. I think he just needs to make the move left and stay aggressive. So 127 in the seventh now for Justin Bone. He can bowl 217. Carey can still finish with 234, so that open frame there hurts pretty bad. Well, one of his assets to the week is that he's been able to bounce back after bad shots or bad games. He didn't let anything get him down. He kept very even keels this week, and he, he not only said that, but his father said in watching him, that was one thing that he was most proud of is that he didn't go, it wasn't a roller coaster ride. It stayed pretty even. I heard it thump holes again. It looked like it just hydroplane through the front part of the lane leaves the 210. It is right here using urethane. Started a little bit too far in, but getting it right and that left lane has no forgiveness when you get a too far right down lane, as we've seen, leaving a 210. Depending on what Caleb does, you know what I'm gonna say about the ninth and 10th frame with Justin. It's ball change time. It's move on the right lane and ball change on the left lane. So an open frame now for Justin Bone. Well, if you are Caleb Carey, stepping up here in the eighth frame, you got seven shots under your belt here under the TV lights here on Bull TV. And now you see your opponent go back to back opens in the seventh and the eighth. What a better situation to step up here and capitalize. You know, Caleb's very humble, but I asked him, you know, what do you think about going up against two Hall of Famers' sons, two of the greatest names in the history of bowling? And he says, you know what? I've bowled against better before, Mike. They're just another opponent. I like that mindset. Big shot for Caleb here. Okay. We have not seen too much of that I on I this <laughs> pair. <laughs> and he gave it the fist pump. <laughs> Gets that ball way right. Now, don't forget, the two-handers, they're starting the ball in deeper, getting it to the right, 
but the good shots didn't get right of that 8-9. That shot, Justin shot, getting out to that 5-6 area. Again, I don't know if Caleb, and I'm going to be corrected on this, is he using urethane? No, he's using he is the, not the, the evil pearl. The evil, I'm um, sorry, the evil, evil pearl. Or quantum. Yeah, evil. Quantum, quantum evil mm -hmm. pearl, yep. So he gets one. So this match is back into, you can have it, I want it. I don't really want it, but you can have it. We're talking four pins here. So this eighth and uh, this ninth and tenth frame are big coming up now again. I, I mean, just in the last two shots, I don't know if it's the you know where you're throwing urethane and you threw some practice shots. Um, Ryan got some practice shots on this pair using the urethane, using some other balls. So. The transition for for the guys is going to be a lot quicker. It's going to be a lot different. Moves are going to have to be quicker. I don't think he really liked that shot, but he got a break, leaving the 3-6. Missed way left of target. Just trying to help it a little bit. Down to the two frames. It's a tight match. Nerves may, may be setting in just a little bit. I know they would be for me. This is a uh, you know, a big show. He just needs to take his deep breath, go through his pre-shot routine, which he does. Covers it. So 190 the max now for Caleb Perry. Justin Bone can strike out for 196. So Justin Bone can go ahead and secure the match here in the ninth and 10th frame. Okay, so last shot on this lane, staying with the same ball, Greek Church. Strike prior to that, strike prior to that. Well, we know on this right lane, you gotta be aggressive. Yes, and you can't get it right early and be slow. Much better shot. shot, much better shot. He kept those angles a little more in front of him. You'll see that right here. Crossing 14 at the arrows down to about that eight, nine. No overhook. Remember how we talked about that eight, nine being almost like the gutter. You don't want to get your ball right of there. Getting a re-rack here. In the rules, I read through the rules, each player is awarded one re-rack. Any other re-racks, they need to ask the tournament official to be granted a re-rack. So one re-rack, and he's taking it here, setting up the 10th frame. Ready for the 10th. Justin Bone. And still get to 196. This first shot in the 10th is huge. And with the first shot in the 10th, if he gets it, he already forces Caleb to have to double. Yep. Sticking with the same ball, urethane on the left lane. Much more direct, hitting light, but the left lane has been either trip four or light hit, carrying best on that left lane. Key shot there, again, has now forced Caleb when he steps up to double. This one here, if he were to strike on this ball, he would just need five pins to secure this one. Give him 191.
Got it to the right just a little bit. Yeah, that one was wide off his hand. A little wide, a little bit harder, amped up just a little bit, but right here you can see the angle, just a little bit further right, getting it out to about six, seven, and doesn't quite get there, leaving a 210. Getting one. 183, I believe. Is that correct? Yep, 183. 183. So now Caleb Carey needs to go up in the 10th frame. He's got to throw a double and get four. No easy task. The four isn't too difficult to get, but the double in front of it is what is degree of difficulty is very high. A little too much up the lane, and that's going to be a third place finish here at Junior Gold. And you can see he really threw his upper body into that one, helped just a little bit, and paid full penalty. But what a great showing by Caleb. So glad he's back on the lanes. I'm glad he's back bowling. Me too. And uh, if he does decide to go to college, anybody would be lucky to have him. I agree 100%. A great bowler and a great human being. Enjoyed covering him and following him here at this year's event. So here is the matchup on paper everybody wanted here. It is the matchup of two Hall of Famer sons, Ryan Barnes taking on Justin Bone. And, and Ryan's only been bowling for a couple of years. At a, at a high level uh, or even committed to bowling more than three times a year, he told me. Right, so it, 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 interesting story about both kids, honestly, but about Ryan, so he, true athlete. I mean, he's so athletic. I mean, there's, there's not a sport this kid can't play. And his true pa passion was basketball. Um, so really, that's what he wanted to pursue first. Um, and he started to get into bowling, and then when the basketball thing didn't quite work out, he said, you know what, I'm going to commit to this. I mean, he comes from two committal parents, so he's not going to do anything, nor will his brother Troy do anything halfway. So senior half year in high school, so say January-ish, he really committed to, to being a bowler and knew he wanted to go to Wichita State. And in talking to Chris, which I've done – quite a bit over the last few weeks because I've seen him <laughs> on the road. Um, Linda's laughing as she's listening to that. But uh, the thing about it is he knew he needed to dedicate himself, and his father told him that too. And, you know, wasn't a starter when he first got to Wichita, right? Because he had only really dedicated, what, six months, nine months by the time he went to Wichita. But going up, practicing twice a day, not only at North Rock and at the, the center that's, you know, on campus, on campus yeah. but truly dedicated himself, and boom, now you have a starter on the Wichita State team, which in itself says something not only about the bowler, right, right? because of the, the powerhouse program that that is, but again, it says something about the athlete, as in he knew what dedication he had to put into it if he wanted to get to the highest level. All of that work and dedication now has paid off where he is leading the U-20 junior gold. So it's, that's pretty impressive to go from your half year senior, mm -hmm. you know, January, and oh, okay, a year and a half later, two years later, I'm like one of the best in the country. I mean, really? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. And Wichita's loaded. They've got, you know, they've got 10, 12 people that could all start for any, any team out there and for Ryan Barnes to, to work his way there. And, and, you know, he told me that he, he's practicing all the time. He's bowling every single day, Always. getting all those reps in. Coach Rick Steelsmith, of course, he got a nice push out of the gate by Coach Mark Baker, who, mm -hmm. who runs the Bakes Camps with, yes. with Chris Barnes. They've been great friends, and, and Barnes is, you know, Chris Barnes is coach over the years. Mm -hmm. But And then, you know, coming home to mom, Linda, you know, he, he spent a, a long time with me this morning just talking about how much his mom has meant to him as well. Of course, Linda is retired from bowling, but Team USA member has won it at every level. And, and, and you know, I, I think he's got just as much from Linda as he has from Chris. Oh, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, it's the yin-yang effect, right? Um, I think Linda is the one that keeps everybody grounded and um, is, is more of that even keeled, I'm going to ground everybody, 
you're kind of screwing up over there. We got to pull you back in. Where Chris, because he's still competitive and has always been that way on the lanes anyway, is a little more um, outspoken and 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 you can you can tell what he's thinking, right? Yeah. Which is which makes Chris and I probably a little more alike than than at times we we like to admit. But I do think that grounding effect has really. Um, allowed Ryan to mature in himself over the last year and I think that speaks volumes as well as Justin I, you know a few years ago Justin had um, some some tournaments where I, I think uh, people said things about how he was acting on the lanes and, and whatever it be and again I think Parker and Leslie pulled back and said hey look we know the support system you have. We know you're one of the best. We know all this. But there's a way that you need to, to act and the way you need to process things and, and handle that around not only your friends but fellow competitors. And right, he has matured immensely in the match. last two years. And again, I think it goes back to the grounded home here. environment so of the parents the game, being able to just speak up and say, hey, wait, game. we need to take a step back right, and, and then move forward. So it's, it's just great to see. Well, here we go. You see Chris in the background just smiling and clapping. He doesn't have to throw it for the weed here. He gets to, to on look here, and this is going to be quite, quite a treat here. Ryan Barnes, I'm calling it his coming out party. This is the first time I've been able to cover him in a championship round here. He's only been bowling for a couple of years competitively, and he's going to have to be defeated twice once again. It is true double elimination. He is the top seed. A lot of power created with the two-handed style. Great shot here by Ryan. You're going to see a lot of ball speed out of both players. You're going to see them playing the lanes the correct way. They're going to play them a little bit straighter so they have that little bit of hold as well as it won't have that over bounce to the right. Another key, though, with Ryan and Justin. We talked about that elbow. We see the two-handed style, right? Ryan also straighter elbow but still generating that rev rate off the hand. And again, the right chair not being used. <laughs> Goes to urethane on the right lane. Goes to urethane on the right lane, which I'm not opposed to because of that hook down lane, correct? Remember we talked about that, but eight is your gutter. Yeah, you got that one out to yeah. about two, three. I think his and feet as you can were too see, far left on absolutely. that one. Absolutely. Got to go more up it on that right lane. I was actually a little surprised. I didn't say it during the first match, but you know, I would probably use reactive on the left lane and urethane on the right lane. We saw Anna, uh, who won our, our U20 girls, she she tried a, a prothane ball, that Rubicon UC3 on the right lane, and, and it looked pretty good. But she wouldn't have tried it on the left lane because it is the slicker of the two lanes. No, and I said the same thing last match. I would have used reactive on that left lane as well. But going down to the 10th frame, he really needed oh, you right, know, exactly. both shots. Right. So it's, it's tough. You can't do it, right? So you kind of go with your gut. He chose to go to urethane on the right lane. I don't think that's a bad idea. We, it's all about the angle. Looking at Justin's ball card here, he's got two purple hammers. It's like he is using both of them now. Uh, he's using two different purple hammers on each lane. He's also got a power torque solid, the heat that we saw him use, and a tempo. That one he threw into the lane, it picked up. Leaves the three pin. Gets that ball way to the right again. A little bit softer ball speed on that one as compared to the one on the right lane. I think that is the key, especially for the boys. You know they're going to be, especially Ryan, he's going to be he's going to be humming it down there, right? So again, you're going to be able to get further right on the pattern, stay on top of it, which his father loves to do and is one of the best at doing it. So again. You're going to see them play the lanes a little bit differently. But again, I think ball speed's going to be critical. Now, Ryan, 
is throwing reactive. He's throwing a reality. I think it's a reality. Yep, he's got the uh, mm -hmm. 900 Global Reality, the 900 Global Zen. He's also got a 900 Global Wolverine, a Hammer Purple Urethane, and an Ebonite. Ball coming in just a little bit light, but here you see it gets it left, which tells you they have hold. Comes in just a little light, but leaves the eight pin. Wastes no time getting on the approach to shoot the spare. Knows exactly what he needs to do. So right here, replay. Gets it to that 8-9, which I like. So again, it's all about that ball speed. Maybe just softening up just a little bit. Another good shot, controlling the pocket, getting it just a little bit to the right, leaving the blower seven. And, and we've seen that consistently across three shows so far, that left lane. Yes. Uh, sometimes you get it a little right and, and you you're, you're wrap 10 or you, you flat 10 or you can leave a seven pin. Now, Justin's going to have to figure something out here because he has not looked very good through two frames. He made the ball change on the right lane, missed right. Threw it into the lane, maybe a little slow on the left lane. He's got two different purple hammers that he's using here. And it's unique with these uh, two bowling each other because they've bowled together on a team at Wichita State. So... They kind of know their ins and outs, you know, worked together as a team and on mental as well as physical. All right, flat 10. Yeah, you talk about the Wichita teammates here, and, and, and I, I did have a chance to, to talk to both players. I like the angle of this shot, but as you can see with the urethane, just not driving through the pins. So again, we go back to talking about possibly changing balls with that angle and that ball speed. That's the place to be. That has been the most consistent and the, and the most, honestly, that's where everybody's had the best look. You've got a contrast in personalities between the two players. You've got Ryan who just sticks to himself, doesn't want a lot of media attention, really didn't even want to have to do the interview with me of course he would do it because it, you know it's what he's supposed to do but it's all about bowling the lane for for Ryan and and Justin is more about promoting the game uh, the the YouTube channel the social media and also being a great player so when you look at, at two young athletes like these two it is quite a difference in personality types here and you know Justin when he went into Wichita he got to start right away Ryan had to earn his way onto the team and they have been teammates and one other thing that uh, that Justin let me know is he's actually going to go back home. He said when he got to Wichita, he was a little homesick. He stuck it out for a year. He was really happy with his experience at Wichita State University. But he is going to go back home now and not attend Wichita University. And he's going to run the Bones Elite Training Center with the Rev Rates VIP Entertainment in Howell, New Jersey. <laughs> Much better shot by Justin. Again, look at the angle, right? Not much angle, playing straighter to the pocket. Gets the break and trips out the nine. And by the way, Ryan Barnes had no problem talking to me. And I was live, so I don't know. It might be you. He had no problem. Although he probably knows his parents would probably say, you can't ignore Carolyn. <laughs> Great shot by Ryan again. I'm wondering if they were watching the ladies bowl to see who had the best look. If you if you watched too, when all three players came over, nobody tried playing in that 20 area, that 15 area. Uh, they moved way to the right, which tells me they were paying attention because 
Ryan has not missed the pocket in four shots. Two eight ten. Did that look firm to you? A little firm, and you could see he used a little more of his upper body. I know that a lot of the two hinders kick their leg up, but he's pretty firm and solid at the line. So again, it's so easy for um, the two handers and he's so athletic. I mean, to be just a little too firm and it just shoots through the spot just by that, you know, you know, that foot. The left lane certainly the, the tighter of the two, just to put it in layman's terms. The right lane hooks a little bit more. The left lane doesn't hook quite as much. So if you do get a little firm on that left lane, that is what can happen. I still think Justin here is trying to find himself. He's only got one strike through four frames. Made a nice shot on the left lane the last time. I do think he has committed to, you, like we've seen, the urethane on both lanes. Keeping those angles a little straighter. All right, now a little confidence, a little momentum for Justin. Much better shot, not as firm as the last shot when he left the flat 10 right little. here, giving the ball time. Yep, little touch, little touch to it. That's what we call that. To make its move to the pocket. Is that what we call it, touch? We call it touch, yeah, in today's So let me ask game. you a question. Mm -hmm. When you're bowling, you know, you're a, you're a house hack, but whatever. When you're bowling, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> what is your... If you're in a pressure situation, what is your mistake? Like, what is your, oh, this is what I normally do when I'm in pressure. Or if you were to make a mistake, I'm sure you've never made a mistake. I, would I don't make mistakes, Carolyn, but okay. if I were to make one, okay. I would probably maybe maybe be get a little grabby with it, trying grabby. to make the ball hook, make sure I carry. That Me would too. That would be what I would do. Yeah. Gets that one a little bit right, but look at that. Keeps the speed up on it, but nice and soft at the bottom. Look at that. That's what we like to see on that left lane. They're not going to get grabby, no thumb. No, they won't get grabby with it. I don't think they're house hacks either. No. I great, like that shot. Great comeback shot by Ryan. I expected nothing less. I think he's listening to you on the broadcast because you say use eight as your gutter. So I, all they got to do is ask. This left lane, I really didn't think that last shot was awful, just a little amped up. This one, a lot smoother off his hand, that last shot. But his angles look good. Justin Bone can finish our strikeout with 258, 236 for Ryan Barnes, the max scores. Exact same leave as the last time on that lane. Ball did not look, the angle looked great, maybe just a little. This lane, we have seen it over and over again, just a little too hard and it goes through that spot, never reads it. I'm gonna give you a nugget here, Carolyn. Okay. Justin Bone has been using urethane on the left lane mm -hmm. for every single ball now for a, a game and a half. Mm -hmm. He started with reactive on the right lane, now we're seeing some down lane hang on the left lane for Ryan Barnes. And to shoot that spare, he did go over to get the purple hammer, so we could see a ball change. Again, Ryan Barnes would have to be defeated twice by Justin Bone. By the way, and Ryan looks just like Chris. <laughs> and Justin, what do you think? That's Parker. Yeah. <laughs> Just need a stick on mustache and we'll be totally old school. So 
a little bit light. You're going to see this transition fast with the urethane. Gets down the lane just a little bit further than it did before. I mean, honestly, did not look terrible, right? Soft with it. Angles were good. Urethane is going to allow them to stay on top of it, though. So he just asked for a re-rack. So here is his one re-rack. Mm -hmm. See the scoreboard there, 114 in the seventh for Ryan Barnes. He can get to 204. Right, this is not over yet. If yeah. Justin does not double, he can shoot 207, correct? Yeah, two, that's, three. that's the Is that pacing. what you said? Yeah. Sorry. No. And then pacing, yeah. Ryan can strike out for 204. Um, you know, we've seen some strange things on this left lane, so. Chris Barnes sent me a text from the front row. Told me that to right and jam it. <laughs> I Sounds told like you. a new music nope. group coming out. But what did I say? What does Chris Barnes do the best? Yeah. Better than anybody. He can stay on top of a pattern, right? Yeah. I mean, sure, especially, I mean, on the senior tour, he's going to start bombing them again out there, which he's already doing. Oh, yeah. But again, what what do you want to do? You don't want to move off this. You can't move left off of this, especially with all the urethane thing going exactly. down. So what are you going to do? Opt to stay on top of it and jam it into the one three. Justin gets that one to read, and the seven has no chance. Right here, nice and soft with it, still keeping it straight in front of him, around that eight board and that seven pin. That's twice, though. That seven pin almost looks like it's going to stay. Ryan likes this lane. Great shot to set himself up for the ninth frame. Needs to make a great shot on this left lane. Put some pressure on Justin. Yeah, it's kind of nice having, awesome. having Chris Barnes as the third member of our broadcast team. He just texted me. He said, on this next shot, you're going to see Ryan not only be too right and jam it like he tried to do on the last shot, but now he's going to move his, his eyes a little bit right on this shot on the left lane. We'll see if he can create a double for him. And it did. Great shot, throwing the messenger over and kicking out the 10. There you go. Seven, eight down lane. Beautiful. We have ourselves the match. Strike here for Justin, though, would put him in really good shape going into the 10th. Ryan's first double on this pair. Definitely got that ball a little left of target. You can see it's hitting about the nine board, comes in just a little light. Also looks like he mishit hit that one just a little bit. Leaves the bucket. Yeah, and the one thing I'm noticing with the urethane going down the lane for, for Justin is he is wiping that ball with a chamois pad every single time. But as it goes down the lane, you can really see a lot of the track. The tr it doesn't flare a lot. You see that oil ring on the ball going down the lane. It picks up a lot of oil. 
and needs friction down lane to make a move at all. Ooh, hard and straight at the spare, just like you like it, Tyrone. Yeah, I mean, just the spare you want to shoot at is the bucket. Reminds me of Norm Duke U.S. Open. So with the max score for Ryan Barnes at 204, Justin needs to get to 205. So there is there is some count here to think about as well on the spare in the ninth. Strike and eight on two balls would do it. But this first ball in this count is very important. This lane over here is no gimme. We've seen two pin combination splits over here quite a bit. Needs to avoid that. Excellent shot off his hand. Again, I love this left lane, the straighter they play it, getting to the right of it. Just needs eight pins on two balls. But if I'm if I'm Justin and I'm team bone back there, I want to see Justin get a strike here so they can use the last shot as an information shot and select another ball. But you gotta avoid four or five here and put you in jeopardy and give your opponent a chance. And that was way right. Area check. Oh. But definitely enough. Well, Let's two, say he's, we're he's got 204. I can't okay. see. There we are. Ryan can get to 204, so he's got to get one of these pens. Justin Bones' work is halfway done here in our championship. He has defeated Ryan Barnes, shot him out. 207 the score. Ryan Barnes can still get to 204. Now, if I'm Ryan Barnes here, I would probably be trying some different bowling balls, different parts of the lane to play. Because these are these are free shots now to get ready for the next match. But he's been rock solid on this right lane. It's the left lane making that move. That allowed him this triple. I feel with the move on the left lane, he is okay with this ball, whether he wants to try it or not, or maybe even try the urethane ball on his fill shot on the right lane, just see what it does. Um, knowing that the left lane is a little bit tighter. You also see Ali Keplinger back there in the front row, Ryan's teammate, Wichita State University. Saw Alec last year. Or was it two years ago now? I can't remember. He made the show last year? Yeah, he made the show last year. He so lost to Cameron Crow. So as you see. Your thing. Ryan tried that. Instead of making the spare just to see what the ball does. And I think that's smart. I think it's smart. I think he stays with what, they, what he has, but by the second frame, if he's on that left lane, if he doesn't like it, switches. Conversation is taking place here. Rob's wanting to know what lane do you want to start on and which lane do you want to finish on based off of where you start. And he just looked at his dad and said, what do you think? Chris <laughs> goes, 50-50. What do you think? You tell me. Okay, so here's my take on it. Okay. If I were Ryan, I'd want to end on the right lane. He's been rock solid on the right lane. Why are you not choosing the right lane to, to, to finish on, right? Which lane has Justin struggled on? 
really both, but the left wing is the one he just ended on and sailed it right, right? Yeah. So to me, I made Justin finish on the left wing, and I finished on the right wing, but... And it looks like uh, the opposite is going to well, actually happen. Of course, happen. because no one listens to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's not going to matter, right? Well, they're both, both they're lanes both are a little challenging yeah, right now. Yeah, they're both going to bowl great. Here we go, game number two. This is it. This is for all the cheese. Not going to roll the four. Nope, almost actually saw the four six right here on the replay. If you watch, goes just a little high. Trips out the six ten, leaves just the four pin. Going over my notes here on my sheet when I did talk to Ryan, uh, he did also want me to give a shout out to his brother, Troy. Troy, not a competitive bowler, but does like to get out and throw the ball around a little bit with the fam. Shout out to Troy. I know he's watching here today as well. Rock solid on the right lane. So Ryan, is athletic and the bowler. Troy is the music major. He plays, I think, three wind instruments. Do you know how hard that is to do? No. It's no. hard. It's hard to do. Um, especially when one of them, I think, at one point was the oboe. So they're very hard to play. And he is looking to possibly be a music teacher when he graduates college. That would be awesome. Ryan has made the right moves, and right there, Ryan Barnes, you see a little emotion right there. Right here, keeping it in front of him, just amping up that ball speed, not trying to do anything funky, or trying not to get around it too much. He's going to use his ball speed to his advantage. Justin answering back on that right lane. Getting that ball a little inside, but out to about eight. I love those tracers. You can see where the ball is at. Again, not creating a lot of angle either, either one of the opponents, which they can hook it plenty, but opting to play a lot straighter because that's what this pattern is calling for. Again, we talked about it earlier, eight, eight patterns. This could be one of the ones they use, maybe seven patterns, depends. We don't know because it's a secret. Nobody tells anybody, you don't know the patterns. So this could be the eighth pattern they're bowling on or one of the previous seven. Exactly. Right up, right up the track area, 2-8. Little inside, leaves the 2-8. We've seen the 2-8 and combination of the 2-8 on this left lane. Yeah, if you miss left, it'll never hook on lane 9. So 
Ryan is perfect through two. There's the Bone family. I didn't know if Sid was going to make it or not. She's here. Mm -hmm. oh, something got Ryan there. Should have probably reset on that one, I gone through the pre-shot routine again. I don't know what he said coming back, but I have a feeling it might have been the camera. Maybe, I don't know. It might have been, but I'm not sure. Oh, Great nice adjustment comeback. on this yep. left lane. Again, ball speed, not trying to overhook it, playing the pattern the way it needs to be, staying left of that hook to the right. Perfect. Yeah, he's really got the left lane figured out now, and he did elect to finish on that lane, so might work out better for him. Got an 8-10 match right now through three frames. Justin with a strike here can keep it at eight. Can't throw it better than that. Great shot on this right lane. Again, Justin has plenty of ball speed as well, but being really soft with the hand, not trying to over hit it, and I think that's been key. Gonna take a little extra time here. It's been perfect on the right lane in this game. Needs to execute a shot on the left lane. Much better shot on this left lane. Took a lot of time. Took a lot of time going through his process. Yeah, it's funny you say that word process. He told me that he's really committed to process over the course of the last year. And when he did, he was able to elevate his game and show up in pressure situations a lot better. <laughs> Ryan with a great answer of his own. I mean, this right lane has just been rock solid for Ryan. And then he has figured out the left lane. I think we're going to see some good bowl in this. Yeah, down the stretch here, I think yes. we will. Ryan still in the uh, 900 Global Reality. It's been kind of his go-to ball here. He stuck with it. It's reading the lane real nice for him now. Oh, 
there's that seven pin we see sneak up every once in a while from the power players when the ball just doesn't read early enough. Nope, just goes a little bit longer, but still great shot. And again, anybody who's watching, so you have two of the best in the nation bowling for the junior gold U20 title. By the way, I was going and over Ryan's uh, bowling ball arsenal earlier, and I saw this written down here, and I didn't believe it. This spare ball here that he, he just barely picks the seven pin with, it's an ebonite princess. It was made in the 70s. That's a rubber ball. <laughs> Well, because if he, want, if he touches it all with his fingers, <laughs> it's going left. No. Um, what I wanted to say was you have two of the best in the country bowling for the U-20 Junior Gold title, um, as well as what we just saw previously out of the women. Um, but with the higher rev rate, this is an example right here that even though you have a, a super high rev rate, you can still play straighter. There are options out there. You don't always have to hook the lane, and I think that's a great uh, lesson for our, our younger youth bowlers. Absolutely. Less is more a lot of the times, especially on flatter patterns. <laughs> Call that the weak 10 or the, or the flat 10. Yep. Great shot, rolls through, it gets it in just a little bit, but of course urethane just kind of leaves that half pocket 10. And, and you really touched on something with flatter patterns, you know, especially when they're so flat in the front, there's not much forgiveness area. So you have to find out where your mistake area is and really just rely on making good shots. Got an eight pin lead for Ryan Barnes through six frames. Championship match, if you're just joining us, welcome into Junior Gold 2022 here from Grand Rapids, Michigan. We're at wonderful Fair Lanes, great hosts here. Got centers right here in the Grand Rapids metro area. We've also got a couple of centers over in Muskegon, about a 45 minute drive west, hosting Junior Gold this year, and in Lansing, about an hour drive east. I want to thank all of our proprietors and hosts of Junior Gold 2022 as we are about, oh, I would say about 25% of the way through Junior Gold 2022. Oh. You see that ball drive through the pins? I don't think I've seen a ball finish that good for, for Justin this. on this ball at all. And look, it gets it out to the right, but down the lane, and look at that. Smooth right off the end of the pattern. That's what urethane will allow you to do. Ryan wasting no time getting up on his good lane and sending the messenger over to hit the 10. Watch the head pin. Half pocket, boom. But that's what the two-handers do. You know, Jason Belmonte has been on the record saying. Who? Jason Belmonte. Oh, he's, okay. he's a pro bowler. Oh, okay. he, he's been on the record to say that when he has a messenger take out a 10 pin, mm -hmm that that wasn't the best shot that he made because he flat 10. The messenger helped him out, and a lot of times he'll make moves off of that. Kind of interesting to think about with the two-handers. True. I know our angle's a little tough here, but got that one just a little bit further right. Doesn't quite get there, leaves the 2-8. Yeah, we're splitting hairs now, though, yeah, at this we are. point. I mean, that, that, <laughs> that still look pretty darn look good. that bad. Yeah. And again, you're in the eighth frame. Adrenaline's going. You know what I mean? You know it's, it's getting down to crunch time. You try not to think about it, but you do. I mean, 16 miles an hour, 17 miles an hour. Great cover. Both players making some fantastic shots this game. Yeah, we can max out at 237 for Barnes, Bone, 249 
So Justin in the 8th and the ninth with a double here can sit down and cannot be shut out. Takes a minute. Was looking at the lane, looking down lane. Left a flat 10 last time on this right lane. I can't imagine the mental training that they have gotten from their parents. Yeah, and it's some pretty, of their parents' friends, too. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty impressive. They rub elbows with some pretty great minds in bowling. Much better shot. Yeah, when you release that ball, you right just here. go, give me a chance. But give right me a here, chance. hitting that eighth board, right? That last shot when he flat tend, it was about 10, a little more in front of him. Gave that one just a little room. There's the fam. Quick look at the fam there. There they are. Sydney Parker, Brandon Leslie. Parker looks like that when he's up trying to throw a strike. He looks as calm as a cucumber, for God's sake. Yeah, Brandon's got him, got him prepared for this, and Sid last year as well. This is this is just a walk in the park. Got to have a strike here, otherwise Ryan can win the match with Justin on the bench. Great shot on this left lane, the one that Every now and then, we're leaving the 2-8. No mistake on the angle on that shot. How you keep your heart rate down for that shot. I mean, you see him back there going through some breathing exercises. I was a little nervous on that shot. But now Ryan, you know, he's, he's got to apply pressure. He can still get to 237. <laughs> And again, sending that messenger across the deck, whether it was a perfect shot, AK, uh, according to the old Belmo, still looks like a strike. Very important because basically, Ryan strikes out. He forces Justin to get the, get the first one. Or first double, one. yes, double. No, double. Well, right at target there. It's a little too quick. Got this one way right. The 2-7 now. 2-17. The maximum score for Ryan Barnes. And at this point, that's not going to be enough. Well, little, I mean, 10th frame, you know, a little amped up. You know, you need them, basically you need them all, right, um, to apply the pressure. Just get a little quick. Well, Ryan Barnes isn't going to be happy with this finish, but Ryan bowled great all week, and 
bowled good on the TV show. Just didn't bowl good enough. So now for Justin Bone, he's in a spot here now where he joins his brother as a champion. His brother's won twice. And now there's a trophy that gets to go up on the mantle at home if there's room for any more. I don't know if it would have made a difference, but I did like the right lane a little bit better. We did talk a little bit about that, and sometimes, I don't know if we take that into consideration or, or not enough, but again, they, when he made the adjustment, it got lined up on the left lane. That's kind of hard to choose. Shot. Nine is a winner. Makes an excellent shot. Took some extra time just to make sure it was what he wanted. And he finishes it out. Another great game by both opponents. I'm sure we're going to see them both back on this TV show. Two twenty-six to two fourteen. The final score. This was a big one. There's the hug with Dad. Already Ladies hugged Leslie. Sister Ryan. Sid. Brother Brandon. And we talked about it. He was homesick going to Wichita State. And you see right here, he's so close with his family. What a moment here in Grand Rapids. And there's one of his biggest fans there, CJ. We saw CJ in there, of course, Chrissy Kent. Doug Kent here as well. There's CJ with a big hug for Justin. See Eric Kraus from Brunswick there as well. Congratulations to Justin Bone from his buddy Eric Kraus, who works for Brunswick, tour rep. Kendra and Kelly, Team USA coaches. Now it's time for pictures, and uh, we will get an interview with our champion, but I also believe we have some Team USA introductions as well that we're going to have for you here a little bonus coverage here on bull tv shout out to all the community watching here on bull tv here today
you can obviously see that Sid got the memo on promoting the Bones Elite Training Center wearing the t-shirt here today. A little inspiration for Brandon and Sid here this week. Okay, everybody, here we are. We've got Carolyn standing by with our champion. All right, I am here with the U-20 boys, junior gold champion, Justin Bone. So the first question is, you opted after the first game to go with urethane on both lanes. Talk a little bit about that option. So I was kind of, it was. I didn't even think it was going to be in play, to be honest. Um, I threw it in practice, and the practice pair hooked way earlier than the TV pair did. Um, I threw, it was it was kind of a last minute thing. Brandon told me the same thing in match play, go to urethane. Um, and it, that's what I ended up using the rest of match play. Um, and then he said it with two minutes left to practice, try the purple on the left lane, and we did. Um, and that's what we went with. Um, the heat that I was using on the right lane was getting too far down the lane when I got it in. And the Greek church was aced. I mean, I, I aced that Greek church. Um, and I was like, you know what? I got I got to keep it in play. What's, what's kept me in it all week is keeping it in play. And that's what we went with. Okay, so in watching the matches and even the, the previous matches, it seemed like the left lane was the lane that got a little bit tricky uh, quickly for, for both rounds. Yeah. Um, were you surprised that Ryan had you finish on the right lane? I mean, it was, I don't know that it was more of that. I think he wanted me to finish the second match. Um, he wanted me to get up in the 10th and, and earn it. Um, which is what I did. Um, I mean, the left lane definitely was tricky, um, but on the practice pairs, I felt like we could throw it to the gutter, where on the TV pairs, that wasn't the case. Um, so, yeah. Okay. And one last question before I let you go. What do you really feel was the key to your win this week? The key to success was the process. I'll tell you what, the learning how important that really is I felt like I've put a lot of hours in for a long period of time. And the process this week is what got me to the top four in qualifying, got me sixth going into match play, and what got me through a lot of matches that came down right to the end. Um, and that's what got me through the, the seventh, eighth, and ninth right there, because those were, those were pretty big shots. Um, and definitely having a good mental game, my pre-shot routine and keeping it slow was, was the key for me. Well, it's been a pleasure, and congratulations again. Very proud of you, and I'm sure we'll see you in the future. Okay, I guess we're going to bring in the parents. So i just been told with the flagging me down, come on over. Stand right here. So we have Leslie and Parker Bone. So we're going to go to the we're going to go to the star maker first, which is what my mom always says. The women are right. So okay, Leslie. Um, he talked a little bit about his keys to success, but he hugged you first, and I know you and I talked uh, the other day when he did not qualify uh, as high as he needed to for Team USA. So what were some of your encouraging words? I just told him to stay with the process. You know, we rode home together after his match play yesterday, and he said, Mom, I finally understand the process. And I'm a firm believer that you plant seeds, you water them, and you watch them grow, and to watch your kids grow into something special it means the world to me. And That's awesome. <laughs> it's just, you know, I know he works incredibly hard, and it's fun to see the maturity throughout the years. I mean, we've watched our kids grow, and to see him just stick to the process and not get ahead of himself this week was really amazing. That's awesome. And then Parker, 
This is basically a simple question. I mean, you, <laughs> I mean, you're one of the greatest of all time, for God's sake. And if there's somebody who really needs to get up in the tent and throw a strike, you're one of the people on the list. What were your words of advice to Justin before he bowled on TV? Mainly to just stay in the moment. But for him, today was all about being aggressive. Sometimes he can be a little tentative. And the last thing that you want to be is tentative, especially when you need it in the 10th. So he made a great aggressive shot there. Nine was plenty good enough, although, uh, you know, he would have loved to strike. I think at that point when he realized that he was one pin ahead of everybody else, mainly Ryan, well, the key to success, he won. Excellent. Well, there's some great words of advice to two great bowlers, because, by the way, Wichita State bowler and a teammate of mine and one of the best ever to put on a pair of bowling shoes. So we're going to see these kids in the future. You've done a phenomenal job. Congratulations to you both. Back to you, Mike. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have awesome. a very special presentation for you coming up here. The Team USA introductions here for your little bonus coverage, and we will yield to the house mic for that, and then Carolyn and I will be back to wrap things up. Ladies and gentlemen, as a part of the 2022 Junior Gold Championships, Competitors are also competing for spots on Junior Team USA 2022. At this time, I'd like to welcome to our championship pair of wings for our Junior Team USA ceremony, some very special individuals. First, our USBC president, please welcome Melissa McDaniel. <laughs> IBC Youth Chair, Chrissy Kent. Junior Team USA Head Coach, Kelly Kewitt. And I'd also like to recognize Senior Director of Rules and Compliance for the USBC, Mike Spritko. And Team USA Program Director of High Performance, Kendra Cameron Curry. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the newest members of Junior Team USA for 2023. We'll start with our girls' team. These four girls have earned their spots based on their performance in qualifying here this week. She qualified in fourth place from St. Louis, Missouri. Please welcome Mary Orm. Second place qualifier from Gerald, Texas, making her second appearance on Junior Team USA, JL Hammond. <laughs> and our qualifying leader this week, she is a seven time member of Junior Team USA. From Hermitage, Tennessee, Mabel Cummins. <laughs> and our final two girls have earned their spots based on their finish at this week's Junior Gold Championships. Our runner up from Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina, please welcome Laura Kurtz. our 2020 U20 Junior Gold Champion, Anna Cowan from La Crosse, Wisconsin. <laughs> now 
Now for the boys team. These four have earned their spots based on their performance in qualifying here this week. Our number four qualifier from Noblesville, Indiana, Nathan Smith. two-time member of Junior Team USA from Richmond, Texas, Julian Salinas. Our number two qualifier, he's from St. Louis, Missouri, Jeremy Keneally. Our tournament leader, he's a four-time member of Team Junior Team USA from Springfield, Missouri, Spencer Robarge. Two boys earned their spots based on their finish at this week's Junior Globe Championships. Our runner-up, he's a two-time member of Junior Team USA, from Denton, Texas, Ryan Bard. <laughs> and our 2022 U20 Boys Junior Globe Champion, Justin Bard. Well, and with that, that's going to do it for today's U-20 Boys and Girls Final. Mike Flanagan here with you. So for my broadcast partner, Carolyn Doran-Ballard, and for our entire crew here at Fairlanes, Jason Thomas, who was producing, Brian Kane. Oh, there's CDB. Well, well here she is. <laughs> she, was down, she was down part of the... I got lost in the clap and I was trying to figure out how everybody's on Team USA for that many years, if they're only 12, and you know, no, I'm kidding, you know, 19 or 20, but anyway. Um, by the way, before you sign off, like, look at that team. Oh there. yeah. Like, that's craziness right there. Like, that's craziness. It's a lot of talent. It's a, oh my God, so much talent. Well, that's going to do it for for this broadcast here. This was this was a good one. This was fun. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for the invite, or I should say, Jason. Thanks for the invite. He's right over there. Look, oh that guy, that guy over there. <laughs> but I'll see you probably. Uh, I'm going to see you next week, right? Yeah, next week we got uh, we got three more shows. Mm -hmm. U12, Excellent. U15, U18 coming up here on Bowl TV. That's for sure. It's been a pleasure working with you, Carolyn. Again, I want to thank the entire crew, Caleb. Curtis running cameras, Brian over here as well, being our uh, Cecil Scarborough, as I like to call him, our statistician. And that's going to be a wrap here. Thanks to everybody in the Bull TV community for being subscribers and watching uh, great competition now in the lanes. We want to thank the USBC, the USBC board, the BPAA, the BPAA board of directors, all the great sponsors that we have that help put on Junior Gold. 
and you uh, for watching at home. So until our next broadcast, we bid farewell here. And remember, on Bowl TV, bowling lives here. Have a good one, everybody.